Alright, Shalom. I'm gonna start off by giving all praises and honor and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and salutations to the hopefully elect. And I want to uh, touch on the video that Elder Malcolm uh, posted. Okay. And um, this is the, this video is dealing with a so-called white woman speaking on how um, so-called white women are jealous of so-called black women. All right. You know their features. Uh, uh, they're jealous of them for their features uh, and different things like that, all right? Now, if you're wondering why I'm saying so-called, okay, because no one is actually white and no one is actually black, all right? These are terms that Esau came up with, okay? He came up with these terms by, one, um, hiding his true identity of whom he is, which he is Esau. He, he is an Edomite, according to the Bible, okay but he has hidden his identity under the term white okay to make people of the world believe that he's pure that he's holy and that he's innocent all right and then he pushed the term black upon the true chosen people of the lord right the biblical israelites whom consists of the so-called negroes latinos and native americans to say they are um for the most part dealing with the so-called like so-called negro okay we'll say the southern kingdom judah Benjamin and Levi, all right, which are the so-called Negroes. Um, uh, Levi, this would be the so-called Haitians today, and, and Benjamin will also be the uh, the brothers and sisters out on the islands of the West Indies. Okay, those that's that's the Southern Kingdom, all right. So you know, pretty much it puts us in the term of black. You know, in the term the term of black, the definition you go into that is you know dark, evil. Um, you know, void of light, so to speak, right? But it's actually the opposite, you know, biblically, according to the scriptures of whom the nation of people actually are. All right, but I'm gonna get into the video very soon. I just wanted to, you know, clarify a few things. So, you know, she's going into it how, you know, white women are jealous of um, basically the black woman, or I'll say the Israelite woman features, okay? How the Israelite woman feet have, you know, uh, hourglass bottle shape, shapes you know you know uh the women of our nation got you know the beautiful full lips um um dealing with the northern kingdom a little bit more than a more than majority than the southern you know that long beautiful uh, curly kinky hair and even though the the, the judite woman you know the hair might not be as as long right for the most part they still have that natural uh, beautiful curly kinky hair which has been denounced today or which they have denounced today because, you know, uh, of, you know, the different, how he has set up society and, his, and how he, uh, how he accepts people to what he thinks they should look like. Okay. So now our people hate themselves where they want to bleach themselves. They don't want to, you know, wear their natural, well, I'm speaking of the women right now. They don't want to wear their natural, beautiful hair. Okay. And they want to straighten it and this and that to make themselves uh, more appealing to fit in Esau's world. And that's a, that's a system that he has set up. So I do understand that on that basis. Okay, but let's get about one to the point. Just had to point out a few things. Um, So when you look at this comment right here, it says, from B. Andrew, it says, an older white woman once told me as a black woman, the, the most high kissed your skin, but he cursed ours. I guess she said that because my black skin was not cracking like hers. I said to her, thank you. Okay, now... And I want to deal with this, you know, we're going to go into a little bit more info. So what, pe what our people need to realize is we are the most, we are the soul of the earth. We are the most beautiful people on the planet. Okay. But not only that, you know, we are the chosen people of the Lord. We are the Lord's chosen royal people. All right. Let's get that. You know, let me, let me cut rambling on. Okay. Because it ain't about me. It's about the edifying of the scriptures. Right. Let's go to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2. So, Salakia for that. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And this is what you see going on right now as prophecy is speaking of, if we have been the elect, if we have been called out of darkness, 
into this marvelous light, into this truth, into the, you know, the true wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the Holy Scriptures, returning back into our heritage, calling upon the names of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, our true powers, which, you know, Yahweh the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai is on the begotten Son, whom is our Savior. Okay? So we're showing forth the praises of him. We're doing what he's commanded us to do. We're going to the highways and valleys, preaching, prophesying the downfall and destruction of America, Babylon the Great. Doing as he commanded, going to the highways and valleys to teach, bidding our people back to the marriage. Okay? But the point is, I wanted to hit that, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. And that's whom we are. Okay? Now, when we tell our people these things of... Do you know that you're the chosen people, that you know you're the, the best people to, on the planet Earth? Our people look at us like we got three heads. You know, they don't want to accept the fact that we are the chosen people of the Lord. You know, because why? They have been conditioned to think that this damn devil is who? That he is the people of the Lord. Okay, through what? He, he done that. He have set that up and have done that and conditioned our people's mind to think that through what? Through Edomite supremacy. All right, so let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 7. It says, Salakia, chapter 7, verse 6. It says, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are, on, that are upon the face of the earth. So the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, of, of, uh, of Negro and Indian descent, we are the chosen people according to the Holy Bible, and that's it. No one else, okay? And when our people hear that, they always want to join and mingle the nations amongst us as well. But, see, but guess what? This is not the case. Even though your mind warped and you want to do this, the Lord is not accepting that. Okay? The Lord is not accepting these other nations. The Lord is already having mercy upon us. The beautiful thing is he's having a mercy upon us. And here you are trying to bring in the other nations into your beauty. Okay, into your heritage. Right? Like I said, which the Lord is not allowing. You know, so getting back to the Carmen, it says, So the Most High kissed your skin, but he cursed ours, you know. And then we, we're going to dismiss this, this kiss your skin part, right? Now we're going, let's go back to the cursed ours, okay? Now when you're dealing with this, the so-called white people today, we're dealing with the majority, you know, um, majority of these people are Edomites. Now, are there Edomites that can come in a brown skin complexion? Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely, you know. Um, you know, when you have, uh, when, I want to say that, when, let's say if an uh, a Israelite woman sleeps with a, a um, Israelite woman sleeps. Let's get the let's get the pull the scripture up before I get there. When an Israelite woman sleeps with uh, a a man of another nation, he puts his seed in that woman, and now the seed that is going to come out that woman's womb, okay, or the child that's going to come out that woman's womb is now going to be from the lineage of that man. So now that child that this Israelite woman is about to have will no longer, right? I mean, will will not be an Israelite. But it will be of the nation of whom the nation of that man is. Okay? Why is this like this? Because the man is the one who carries the seed. Okay? He is the one who plants that lineage inside that woman. And she's going to bring forth with whatever child, whatever uh, nation that that man is. According to the book of Numbers 1 verse uh, Numbers chapter 1 verse 18 And they assembled all the congregation together On the first day of the second month And they declared their pedigrees After their families by the house of their fathers According to the number of the Of the names from 20 years old And upward by their poles Okay So the pedigrees, the lineage Is going to be after the house of the fathers Okay So a lot of people get confused today Of you know these terms of white Black Mixed, there is no such thing as a, mix, a mixed people, okay? You come from one nation, right? You got women to say, I'm, 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 I'm black and Lebanese, you know what I'm saying? Because my mom's black and my daddy's Lebanese. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? They'll say things like this. You know, I'm, a, I'm, a, a, I'm black and ease, <laughs> you know? My, mama, my mama's black 
and, and my daddy's a, a Chinese. Well, if and that's that, if it, if that's the case, then guess what? According to the scriptures, you're a Moabite. Okay, your lineage will go back to the Chinese people. No matter if you got the dark skin and the kinky hair, because you can still take on the features of your mother, but that does not make you by lineage, by lineage, so-called black, so to speak, an Israelite. No, you would be a Moabite according to the scriptures. Okay, so let's continue on. I know I'm kind of getting out of, you know, just, just, you know, trying to, uh, you know, cover a few points here. <clears throat> okay, so it's like if I'm going over the place and just moving in the spirit, you know. So, oh, yeah, so we're going back to this, this cursed skin. Now, this will go back into what? Leprosy. All right. Leprosy. Now, let's, let's go to what leprosy is. As a matter of fact, one second, I'm going to see the smell, man. <clears throat> How you doing today? Hey, how are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Yep. <sighs> All right, so where was that? Um, yeah, so it says, so the Edomite woman already knew through the spirit. He says, uh, or she already knew through the spirit when she said, you know, basically, uh, I'm I'm perceiving as the most I kissed your skin, meaning he blessed your skin, but he cursed ours. Okay, now let's go into um uh, uh leprosy all right let's go to the book of leviticus Levit leviticus chapter 13 verse 13 it says Let's start at verse 9. Let me see. It says, When the plague of leprosy is in a man, then he shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall see him, and behold, if the rising be white in the skin, and it have turned the hair white, and there be quick raw flesh in the rising, it is an old leprosy in the skin of his flesh, and the priest shall pronounce him unclean, and shall not shut him up, for he is unclean. And if a leprosy break out abroad, in the skin and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that had the plague from his head even to his foot whatsoever the priest looketh then the priest shall consider and behold if the leprosy have covered all his flesh he shall pronounce him clean that have the plague if all turn white he is clean but when raw flesh appeareth in him he shall be unclean okay and a priest shall see the raw flesh and pronounce him to be unclean for the raw flesh is unclean it is leprosy or if the raw flesh turn again and be changed into white, he shall come into the priest, and the priest shall see him, and behold, if the plague be turned into white, then the priest shall pronounce him clean, that had the plague, he is clean. Right? So this is going into the law. This is going into the law of uh, 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 how to deal with uh, leprosy. Right? Um, let me see. Further, I want to go further. So, I mean, you can read Leviticus, the 13th chapter, to kind of get an idea how it goes into uh, leprosy and how to deal with leprosy. But the point is, you know, when you have the leprosy, okay, as, uh, you know, as how Miriam got stricken with leprosy, she was considered what? She was considered half dead, right? Now, let's get that. Let's get, um, matter of fact, let's go, let's start with, let's start with, uh, Let's start with Moses, right? Now, we do know Moses was an Israelite. So, it's the book of Exodus, chapter 4, verse um, 6. It says, and the, and the Lord said, Furthermore, to, and to him, put now thy hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his land was leprous as snow, right? Meaning white. And he said, put thy hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. Ask yourself now, what was Moses' color of his other flesh? Of a dark skin. Okay, this is the, this is the reason why Moses was able to pass as the son of, of the daughter 
of that Egyptian woman because what? He was of a dark skin. So he was the he was able to pass as an Egyptian. Now if he had white skin, there was no way possible that would be that would have been able to take place. Okay? That's just one example. Right? Um let's go to Book of Numbers. And I'm gonna get something after this. The book of Numbers, chapter 12, verse 10. It says, um, so this is when uh, Miriam and, and Aaron bucked up against Moses, right? Now, look what happened to Miriam. Numbers 12, verse 10. And the cloud departed from all the tabernacle. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam. And behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed. When he comes out of his mother's wound. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Hear her now, O Most High, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If if her father had had but spit in her face, she should not be ashamed seven days. Let her be shut out of the camp seven days, and after that, let her be received again. Okay? So, hey, Miriam was leprous, and she got shut out the camp for seven days for bucking up against uh, her brother Moses. All right, but what she was stricken with leprosy, okay, and that was leprosy was a sign of uncleanness, okay. When you go into Levit Leviticus the thirteenth chapter, okay. So when you see these these Edomites walking around, these people were a bunch of half consumed lepers dogs, okay, walking around with no pigmentation, okay, no melanin, so to speak, right. Um, and hey, and you can see as they got that from their forefather who? G uh Esau. Okay, because he came out the womb, you know, as uh, uh our forefather uh Isaac called as it called his name um uh uh Ishashua in the Hebrew, right? Okay, meaning what he wasted away because he didn't have no pigmentation. Alright, so this is why he that's this is why he was you know, he was just his description was pointed out because he looked different from everyone else. All right. At this time. So when you go into this, 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 this comment, right, it says basically the most have blessed your skin, but he cursed ours. Right. Which this is true. All right. Um, th yeah, that's what I want to get. Yeah. So when you go into when you go into not this like so when you go into this, right, the Book of Mormon. Right. The Book of Mormon. I just want to point this out. It says, for example, many passages in the Book of Mormon speak of dark skin as a curse for sins, as opposed to the white and delightsome appearance of the righteous. Check that out. Right. So you have a doctrine being pushed by the Mormons that having dark skin is the curse. You see, you see that this is the narrative that they're pushing. Right. Which the Book of Mormon is not, you know, uh, uh, it's not, this, 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 uh, that, that book is a false book. Okay? That was not enlightened by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh So, I'm just going to jump and grab two of these real fast. Okay? Let's go to 2 Nephi 30 and 6. 2 Nephi. Whoa. Oh, chapter, chapter one. Hold on. It's a lot because I don't even know how to move around with this. So second Nephi thirty and six. Ooh. So this is the book of second Nephi thirty and six. It says, in hmm. It says, and then they shall rejoice, for they shall know that it is a blessing unto them from the hand of the Most High, and their scales of darkness shall begin to fall from their eyes, and many generations shall not pass away. Uh, and many generations shall not pass away among them, save they shall be a pure and delight some people. Uh, I don't, hmm, I don't quite understand that one right yet. Scales of darkness shall begin to fall from their eyes. Oh, let's try a different one. to lock it for that one um let's try second e5 5 and 21 oh man come on man Mm -hmm. 
Second Nephi 5 verse 21 says, and he caused the cursing to come upon them. Hold on, let's. Let's start at verse 19. It says, Behold, the Lord, the, the words of the Lord have been fulfilled unto my brethren, which he had been spake concerning them, that I should be their ruler and their teacher. Wherefore, I have been their ruler and their teacher, according to the commandments of the Lord, until the time they sought to take away my life. Wherefore, the word of the Lord was fulfilled, which he spake unto me, saying, that as, And as much as they will not hearken unto, the, unto thy words, they should be cut off from the presence of the Lord. Behold, they were cut off from his presence. And he had caused the cursing to come upon them, yea, even a sore cursing because of their iniquity. For behold, they had hardened their hearts against him, that they had become like unto a flint. Wherefore, as they were, wherefore, as they were white and exceedingly fair and delightsome, that they might not be enticing unto the people of the Lord God, they had caused a skin of blackness to come upon them. This is Edomite supremacy right here. Okay, this is what we're reading. Edomite supremacy. So basically, they're saying that when you sin, okay, a curse of blackness comes upon you. This is what they're saying. They're saying because we disobey the commandments and you sin, right, your, 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 your fair skin of white left off and you became black. You became dark. And this is the way the Edomites look at us today. But this is what is being pushed through the doctrine of Mormonism. If if you have black skin, you're cursed. Because if you have black skin, you're cursed. Which this is completely unbiblical. All right, you see, you see the madness that they're pushing. And I just wanted to point that out. Um, so let's get another one real quick. Let's try. Let's try Moses seven, chapter seven, verse eight. It's lucky for keeping this long. I'm just trying to get a few points. Mm. Maybe I picked the wrong one. It's Mosiah. Hmm. It's all good. You see the point. You see the point. Whatever. We got, we, we got one and that's all we all we needed. But you know what? Let's just, you know what? Let's get another one. Jacob 3 and 8. It says, Oh, my brethren, I fear that unless you should be repent of your sins, that your skins will be whiter uh, sins, that their skins will be whiter than yours when you should be brought with them before the throne of the Most High. Wherefore, a commandment I give unto you, which the word of Most High, that you revile no more against them because of the darkness of their skins, neither shall you revile against them because of their filthiness, but you shall remember your own filthiness and remember that your filthiness came because of their fathers so that's still pushing that you know that that's that dark skin vibration okay you went off you got dark skin dark skin because you went off so that's what that's you know still the energy that's still pushing so end of the day you know a lot of these these devils they they know that they know that we are the people of the most high they're just afraid to admit it they know that we're the best in everything they're just afraid to admit it you know, and a lot of people are just ignorant and have been been duped with Edomite supremacy. And they do think they are actually the, 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 the rulers of the earth. You know, we know, I mean, we know going to the elites that the elites, the earth is given it to the hand of the wicked. But you got these low level Edomites are thinking that, you know, they're really the chosen people of the Lord. That's what I meant to say. As far as that aspect, they think they are the chosen people of the Lord and that they are the biblical people, which... It's the opposite. So I know it's kind of all over the place, but Lord willing, I hope it was edifying. Till next time, I want to say, Shalom.